How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker in the car again. This time not alone. My buddy Dart is here and we are at Montgomery Community College. Montgomery Community College asked me to check out something very interesting. They call it a drone mobile command unit. It's like a trailer that houses a bunch of technology that enables uh, first responders and emergency personnel and, and public safety officials to fly drones in a way that normally cannot be done. Uh, let's see what is in store, because that sounds really interesting to me. Now, how you doing, John? Good, sir. How nice to see you. Good. So tell me a little bit about what we are standing in front of today, this unit, this mobile command unit for UAS. This is designed for UAV systems to be able to retrieve real-time data and HDMI feeds. We're able to distribute those either by a tether to another command station, live feeds, gather it for mapping or other purposes, construction purposes for processing later on in the trailer. Now some of those primary reasons also have to do with public safety yes, and emergency and search and rescue. Talk about some of the things that this uh, unit has been specialized to do for those particular purposes. So we've been working with Montgomery Community College on training the emergency services. This trailer has been an essential product for that as in this is a quick deploy. Everything is here set they're able to distribute all their information. We can send up the aircraft they need, the IR camera, the 4K cameras, an eye in the sky. We're able to monitor everything in the area going on. Um, we're able to distribute all that information real time to command to another trailer. We're also able to give them internet. All our live feeds, all the communications are just instant. Basically, we set an IR guy up here. He's flying with the IR. So you, typically, you could have two, two Two helicopters are in the air. So the IR will be on here and the 4K will be here. So this is basically an eye in the sky. The IR is doing some real, you know, intense seeing what's going on mm -hmm. um, as in hazmat displays and stuff. So your, your two pilots or two cameramen actually sit here mm -hmm. and control the cameras where your pilot is outside. Okay. So for FAA and that, they can fly from in here to pilots, no problem. Mm -hmm. But for, for the 107 rules, pilot must maintain visual line of sight. I've never seen an Inspire one in person before, so I'm just really oh, no? excited to okay. see that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. They really are. Now, what kind of camera do you have on here? Um, that is the X3. We do okay. have an X5 RAW, and we have the XT here, which is the thermal. So we have... Uh, oh, I got you. The X5 RAW is... Now they have the X7, but it's still really a really nice camera. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be filming with that off an Osmo. But this is the XT. This right here is around $10,000. Wow. And we'll be putting that on there, and that'll give us the IR displays from the air. Now, because this is Inspire, it has a camera that can be controlled with a different remote, and that's what's great about Inspire cameras, and I'm assuming the Matrice can also do that. Yes, sir. But if you're using something like a Phantom, that can't be done. So that means no, the sir. pilot and the, essentially the cameraman both have to be outside as one yeah, individual it, person. It, it comes down to, you know, it's a great aircraft and all, but um, yeah, no. For a professional platform to really film, if you film aerial, two camera operation mm -hmm. is the absolute way to go. Gotcha. Uh, safety, everything, you know, the pilot concentrates on what he's doing, and the cameraman has full operation of the mm -hmm. camera, the gimbal. All right, so that's a feed from the Inspire camera, isn't it? Yeah. Which is on the desk. So these two ports right here are 2.4 antennas um, that go, are on the roof. These hook up to a modified radio, which this radio is not modified and the two wire points come off of here, we wire to here, that gives us an extended range. Now our extended range isn't typically for the RC itself to get farther out with the helicopter, the extended range is for a better video feedback. Mm. Your video feed gets weaker, it has yeah. a weaker signal, so you don't have all that range, so we really boost it for that better video signal coming back to the trailer because the best we can get in here is the better we can send out. Distance out is around 3,000 feet before you really start seeing that video signal mm -hmm. degrade. We, we connect to these, you're up to 6,000 feet out. That's over a mile out mm -hmm. before you even start seeing any wow. kind of video That's degrade. Great. So we, we basically boost that video more than double. So right now we are about to attach the um, IR camera. So this is the XT. Once you turn the drone on, it'll do its whole uh, gimbal 
calibration and it'll all be good. So basically what you're looking at is the feed from our remote coming directly from the craft. Um, so that's feeding through to our iPad. And then we also have an HDMI feeding through the mobile station. So that goes to the matrix that's on the inside and we're feeding that to all the monitors. So the two out here and the two in there. This is a small matrix, we can put a larger matrix in, but we can allow four HDMI feeds to come into the trailer. So we're set up for three helicopters, able to fly a helicopter from here, here, mm -hmm. here, and outside. You can put the IR and the 4K camera on here. So on here, we'd have one aircraft in the air. On one of these displays, we could have the IR. On the bottom display, we'd have a 4K. So that's coming from one aircraft. But other way we can do this now is, is we can put two aircraft in the air from here. We can put a 4K here in the IR, fly over the same subject and give you the two pictures. Now each one of these pallets is designed for a certain you know, reason. But typically, you know, like I said, for search and rescue, you're going to use black on white or white on black. Mm -hmm. So you that's can black on white. Face. Yeah, you can yeah. make out a face in that. It's, it's, it's really good. So here we go into the black on white. The, the bodies will, will register better on the black. No, white on black. Right there. Yes. Body heat's going to register better right there. So we're going to take off and we're going to go back over to construction site back here. We've got a bunch of heavy equipment running back there, so we should be able to get some good stuff. So basically we're just going to get up to a certain height um, before we pretty much start going out any further. Just make sure we're clear of any trees, any obstacles. And so as you can see, we have some construction going on back there. So we're just going to go fly over there. So you see the variations in the heat on the ground. That's from fresh dirt being moved around. So some of it's surface heat. So those are all different heat variations. Yeah. When things are kind of cooling down to where there are similar temperatures, um, different color palettes will show those different temperatures a little better. So like this one's showing a little more heat differentiation than the black and white might. And so at this point, because of everything you've talked about earlier, you could be transmitting this to other command centers. You could be transmitting this to people who this information is really uh, important to, to, to see this and to know where exactly maybe this person is at any given point in time. Yeah, so typically we won't, re or won't record directly from the drone itself um, just for security reasons. What we okay. will do is if we are streaming it, um, or even if we're not, typically our live stream boxes have the capability record to record themselves. Um, so we'll record right to those onto an SD card and then have that saved for future reference or go from there. So, yeah, we're all underneath it. We're all underneath this canopy and yet we see... No, I see. Okay, it is covering us. All right. So really only if we were stepping out from underneath it. Yeah, okay. Now, if somebody were to put their hand on it, go ahead and put your hand on it. Watch where his hand is. I got mine on top. Where's mine? Oh, right there, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Still a little warm. It's a little dot there. Of course, it's small if I came down lower. Left and right on the left lever, and up and down on the right lever. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And then color palette with the right wheel. Interesting. Yeah, so there we are. I'm pressing. Oh, it does go up. Hmm. Well, you've got 360 degrees and uh, 30 degrees up and 90 degrees down. It takes a little bit of getting used to because the left thumbstick only controls yaw. The right thumbstick only controls pitch. And so there is a, there, there's a dead axis on both thumbsticks. So I'm just kind of getting used to that, but uh, <laughs> kind of interesting. It's like a crazy music video. <laughs> wow, sunglasses look crazy. I gotta get a shot of this. He looks like a skeleton. Your nose is really cold, John. Looks uh, looks straight at the drone now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Shut her down. What? This is Riley Beeman and he's with Montgomery Community College. Riley, what are you involved with here? I'm the uh, director of the North Carolina Public Safety Drone Academy here at the college. Gotcha. Okay. And so that primarily deals with drones as a, as they pertain to emergency personnel and, and that type of thing? Absolutely. We're, uh, what we've done is uh, around two years ago, we started an academy for North Carolina uh, 
exactly doing what you're saying is going around and we are training emergency services and first responders across the state of North Carolina how to fly emergency situations. So whether it be from the part 107, the legal aspect, making sure all the guys get all their license uh, and know the, the laws and regulations for the state and for the federal government, um, to actually flying scenes and using different platforms, different camera systems and things like that. Uh, we have around 60 drones in-house that are, that are owned by the Academy, um, which we run through Montgomery Community College in the center of uh, North Carolina. Um, but we w really tailor the flight on whatever the department wants to fly. So uh, this past week we did the emergency management um, uh, department from Raleigh. They have a DJI 600, which is a very large industrial uh, application um, by DJI. And they also have the, uh, the new Mavics, which the State Highway Patrol is using the Mavics mm, now. Okay. So um, basically whatever platform that they want to utilize is what we'll train them on. Gotcha. And some of the capabilities that these drones have, I remember hearing about thermal imaging and that type of thing. What kind of technology is associated with these drones? It's unbelievable. All the way from search and rescue, SARS events, um, to uh, the Highway Patrol utilizing cer uh, certain software with the Mavics uh, for scene reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So if a Highway Patrolman comes up on a scene uh, on a major highway, they can get the Mavic out. They can do all kinds of three-dimensional scene reconstruction. They get the cars out of the way quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, they free up the, the interstate. So for that, it's a safety platform. Uh, for them, but with thermal uh, imaging, search and rescue, you've got fire departments that are using it now to keep up with uh, how a fire is spreading. Um, going into investigation, arson investigation, they're utilizing uh, the platforms for. So numerous, numerous things, um, all the way down to uh, real estate and surveying and mapping. Take me through some of the aspects of the course. I know there's a simulation component. There's also like a real flight time component. What is the course like and how many hours would it take to complete? Uh, right now we run the course uh, each uh, fall and spring semester. It's roughly around 95 to 96 hours. Um, we incorporate a lot of uh, Part 107 education or Part 107 prep uh, to get guys ready to take their 107 test with the FAA. Uh, and then we'll have a lot of hands-on flight demonstrations. So what we're finding across North Carolina is a lot of the guys, drones are, are we're a little late to the game. Mm -hmm. So drones are, are becoming uh, vastly popular in emergency services and a lot of departments are just going out and buying drones. They don't have pilots, they don't have guys who know how to fly, they're just interested in getting a drone. Um, when we first had the idea of doing the academy, we wanted to give it legitimacy, so we ran it through Montgomery Community College. Um, for those people who are watching, running it through a community college allows us to provide classes tuition free for emergency service personnel uh, across the state of North Carolina. They're tuition free. Working with the Division of Aviation, we think it's really, really important to make a standardized education for emergency services across the board with UAV. That way every group's not learning something totally different mm -hmm. uh, and everybody's learning across the board. Partnering with uh, mobile UAV stations and John Martin and his, his, uh, his guys, we had the beauty of being able to use this anytime we need to. Mm -hmm. So we've taken it all over the state with the Division of Aviation who is also having a command center built uh, and different uh, state agencies and we've been able to host different workshops out of this. All right, guys, that is it for the mobile command unit here at Montgomery Community College. If you want to learn more about their drone academy, go to montgomery.edu and go to my own website, edricker.com, for some of the drone accessories and drones that I use on any given shoot. Thank you to my friend Dara also for filming. He was a good sport and followed us around for the day. So thank you, Dart. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, happy flying.